he's still the road commissioner, so um, he's still the hub and everything would be going through Steve and the committee before it's been in town. I want to be town manager and I know that's <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it's like it's like um, <laughs> and the selection role would be the final decision maker. One of, one of the things that's happened um, as, as the position of road commissioner changed from an elected to a, um, an appointed committee, uh, there were some changes that weren't articulated well enough about roles, et cetera, et cetera. And back when we rolled out our first plowing contract and the sand contract, um, after the, the uh, contract was awarded, there were a lot of questions from people who know roads, etc., who came afterwards and asked questions about the contract. And I didn't think that that was the most helpful way to ask the questions. So part of the idea when I just kind of boarded out one day, gee, maybe we should have a road committee, was the idea that some of those discussions should happen pre-contract. Um, so the idea was that people who know something about roads in town um, could have some input um, before the contracts were developed and as they were being developed and, and, um, and, served, and the committee served as kind of not, not a boss to the road commissioner but a sounding board, et cetera, so that when the proposals came to the Board of Selectmen, um, there would at least have been some discussion by people who actually know how to put a road together before we got it. And speaking for myself, I read a book once about how the roads were built, but I'm by no means a professional road person. I'm just opinionated. Um, so that's one of the funding reasons why I blurted that out or six years ago, um, so that we could avoid having questions asked after a contract had already been put out, after an RFP had been built. So... Uh, well, do you have more questions within the community other than just the four board members then, if you're trying to alleviate well, questions? Well, no, not to alleviate questions, because people are always going to ask questions. But we'd have a better idea what questions might come up because, because they already, many of them already would have come up. Okay. I think also part of, um, one of the things we were hoping to achieve with this as we brought it forward was to set um, a road improvement schedule uh, of, so we know every eight years or so, here's what we're gonna pay, here's what we're gonna repair, so we can kind of feel that we have um, a better control on upcoming emergent repairs um, and, and having the committee go out and help evaluate um, where the roads are and, and repair need, what culverts perhaps need to be addressed, certain elements that perhaps we don't see on a regular basis, and that's in hopes of having the committee provide some additional input on, on the status of our roads. So we're supposed to give our recommendations to the select board and then the select board collaborates with Steve or are we supposed to collectively collaborate with the road commissioner? I mean, I guess I'm a little confused. I feel like there's a disconnect between the three. The, the committee would work with the road commissioner and then the road commissioner with us as the board select. <clears throat> um, and of course, as anybody is have to come to me, allowed to come to a board meeting. Yeah. So our job is to give Steve our recommendation on what we see that, that may, may need improvements, and then he will collaborate with us. Well, I think in an ideal world, I mean, um, if, if you're going to send them to Steve in writing, that you would copy the board in on it so we all see them at the same time. Okay. Um, and just we're, we're made aware of what's being discussed. Okay. And I think that would be a good solution. We, Part of what the committee brings to the table, you'll have a chair and a vice chair. So maybe you would have whoever that chair happens to be as the focal point um, in a collaboration with the committee and then certainly connecting with Steve and the 
this left for you. Okay. So is there a, uh, do all of our roads have an evaluation put down on them? And how, if they do, how is that evaluation determined? So I know we have a software program part of the DOT um, that we have a license for. I know that one of the things we talked about was bringing that um, and, and starting to use it. Um, we're not currently using that. And that's something that we can, as we input the information into that platform, it will let us know, essentially track all of the roads um, in performance and, and hopefully provide some of those metrics. Right now, we don't have that information. We're not utilizing the platform. Is the information generated by complaints or suggestions, or how is the information generated? All the above. Okay. And that's just, there's certain roads that I don't travel that I wouldn't know, and there's roads that you probably don't travel. So hopefully, the collective approach is to get an idea of where everything stands. Um, if you see that there's a culvert that's clogged or overflowing during a storm, that will help, right? You know, address it. You know, as people see it, or if, if somebody in the community sees that. And we welcome their input if no one else has seen it. Is that information uh, written down and kept at the town hall? Would that's that be what we want to do going forward, and that's what we want to use that software for. I mean, I know there's been a lot of work done on a lot of these roads, but we couldn't tell you the last time that Calvin on Birch Point was, was cleaned out. And we should have a uh, yearly schedule maintenance on some of this stuff. Ideally, we'd like to use that software and get every culvert that's in the town, driveway, entrance, stuff that the town is responsible and stuff will all put right in there and add it. But I can include it. Yeah. That's kind of my question. You've got it in the head. Does anybody else? As far as how many culverts they are? Uh, I, I, I don't have it all in my head. Uh, I'm sure that Jeremy knows as many as I do. I basically find out somebody will call the town hall and say there's a problem with this helmet. Who would have to assess the situation to get fixed? Well, you're in your pickup truck, so you have a great time to put it in the records, right? Right. Yeah. It, as far as the covers it goes, a few years back, the town did do a list of all the covers that had looked at, probably 10 years ago now. Some of it was a list of all the covers in town. In what ones we did back then. Yeah. That's why that software is going to be so important. I mean, we, we all have bits and pieces, but nobody has it all. You can go to one database and get right. the information. It was probably 10 years ago, but there right. was a complete list of all the colors. And ones that were missed were added to a later on. But whose who's responsibility is it to have that before you know, so. Essentially, the town administrator. I mean, she's got the software, so it's going to roll up to the the, the compilation of the data brought to us and then shared and, and put it in the software platform. So, so it, it won't be data that I come up with. Right. It will be data that I receive from the road commissioner and the road committee. And then I, I would be responsible for putting it into the computer program. Gotcha. So Steve is going to be responsible for documenting every single culvert. <laughs> Down on back. Um, well, through, through the assistance of you, though, yes. Right. I mean, in theory, it'll roll. You'll, Hypothetically, you each, let's say we have 25 miles, we want to say I think 27 or 29 something miles. You each take six miles of road, drive around on your grid, say, oh, culvert at this address looks okay, or maybe need some repair. I mean, that's really, we're trying to get the first cursory look at okay. the status and then figure out the plan after that. We don't, I mean, we don't know the full status um, of you know, what roads need what. Okay. So that's ultimately the priority at this point is the culverts, it sounds like? I well, think that's uh, part of You work with the road commission to determine this. We're not, my thought is, we're not here to tell you what to do or how to do it or what the priorities are. You as the committee are going to tell us what the priorities are because you know, that's what we're asking for. You know all that better than the three of us sitting up here. Okay. I think it should be important to let the committee know that the board of selectmen did discuss with the road commission uh, a few weeks ago the possibility of looking at some kind of employee of the town uh, to have some equipment to do some of these small repairs. Yeah. Like full-time employee? Mm -hmm. Full-time, I, 
five times. It's, it's just time. being looked at now. Discuss whether you buy them a one-time truck and a few tools and a trailer, or whatever. You know. Okay. To address a plug cow or a tree that fell down. Uh, you know, things of that nature. That's one thing the town is just, looking at. Isn't that? Would it, would it be cheaper just to pay the extra money and have like a local contractor? I care as opposed to carrying workman's comp and insurance. Mm -hmm. You're right, Jim. Don't know yet. It's, it's no, being looked okay. at. I mean, I mean, they would be doing more than that. They'd be mowing the lawn. They'd be, you know, the graveyards, uh, all the schools, same in the school. Okay. I don't know. Be, we'd have to make it where it would come out feasible. Financially feasible. The biggest okay. and reason. And who's doing the takeoffs on that? So we have to cost. These are all yeah. ideas and all of part of what we want. Yeah. All of your input for for the idea of what would be best. Nothing here has been decided. Sure. That's why you guys are here. But I thought yeah. you guys should know that was being talked about. Okay. And so I guess what I'm asking is that has anybody set that particular role? I mean, who's actually looking for that particular information so we could collectively make uh, an I think we had talked, part of that discussion has kind of bubbled around, but we talked, had some serious conversation about it at the last um, comprehensive plan committee because of the number of little teeny tiny jobs that just sort of never get done, that just need to be done, like a pothole somewhere. And with the difficulty that people have in um, maintaining regular employees and keeping schedules, especially in the season like we've had where people are doing a lot of stuff everywhere. Yeah. Um, so the idea of having a municipal employee was kind of floated as a way to handle that. So you're asking for the somebody to manage this particular yeah. Right. That would be the road commissioner. The road commissioner so would the manage the day-to-day -day things with? on the road. Okay. Not the administrator. Road commissioner is, is Gentlemen, I can't hear. Yeah. Well, Please, if, Mike. if the road commissioner is is ultimately overseeing this individual, he's going to end up being a full time individual as well because there's no way he's going to be able to manage his his business that he has now. And it would and just oversee. be managing the, re the things that needed to be done. Ultimately, um, what we talked about was maybe this is someone who currently what I'm thinking about is maybe clouds the town office, maybe, you know, a combination of things. Um, so I'll maybe Steve would be the one listing the priorities, but he wouldn't be able to see in the day to day. And we're not touching the leader yet. Okay, sure. We need to look at, there's a lot right. that goes into that yeah. on, on the evaluation of um, cost analysis. Uh, what, we're, what we're running across right now is people are looking more out of the town to get things done when they call. Okay? <clears throat> Right now, they'll call and they expect it down. They think we're municipal. We have a municipal now. Right. And they, if you don't get it done right then, they call five, ten, fifteen more times. Then they start batting off the paper. It doesn't get done. So if you had a guy on hand, on duty, whether it's 20 hours a week, and send him out on these little projects that call in, you take part of what we're looking at. This was not brought up to have to solve this tonight. This is just what yeah. you know about it. Right. It's, it's very preliminary. It may not fly, but it's, it's being discussed as well. Right, okay. And, and I, I mean, ultimately, you guys will help decide, perhaps if that's even, you know, you may go out there and be able to determine a status on our roads um, and, and get it, you know, if we can get a schedule established on, you know, scheduled hot top, scheduled ditching, scheduled, just so that we can get an idea, it helps to coordinate the schedule of, of repairs okay. and, and expenses. Okay. Um, so when would the first meeting be and what information could be given to us so we can start this process? Because we're going to need your thoughts on it also, where you'd like to see us go. And we need information from the town of, you know, I mean, we're going to find out best where the worst roads are. People are going to complain about it. I would think that would be something that needs to be addressed in this meeting. You know what? What avenue to pursue to achieve all of this? So. Right. It's 
So, do you, Steve, do you want to set a meeting? Do you want to? Do I? Do I? My charge of opinion, I don't see any need for me to even be a part of this. This is something you guys wanted to put on. Um, I don't. They come up with suggestions. I'm more than willing to listen to them. Try to get them done for them. I'm not going to sit here and meet these guys, you know, and do my regular job too to figure this out. I, I, that wasn't a part of this whole deal. No. I did not sign up to be on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Um, what? It would make sense if we um, call, if we as the select board call the meeting and and talk with you all about what you are seeing at this point, about what you have as your own observations as people who drive the roads every day, and you know what you're seeing instead of, I drive the roads and I don't really know what I'm looking at. Um, but Steve also has also some plans that are not in the computer yet, so we can get those from him, what he's looking at for priorities as he's looking at budgeting for this year, so that we can get things started, and then you guys know how to talk, so you'll figure stuff out. So would it be appropriate while you're all sitting here, so we're looking to have a chair and a vice chair to define you want to try and achieve that tonight, and then you can establish your dialogue path forward? Chair. No, I think we need to schedule a meeting, yeah. and then we can collectively come up with a discussion, see what everybody's role wants to be. I think tonight's a good introduction for everybody, and we can figure out a, a, a date and time where we can meet collectively as a committee, and then we can determine who's the chair and vice chair. Prior to electing the chair, can I ask you to manage that first meeting? Sure. Perfect. I'll manage the first one. That's all I said. Prior to that, yep. can you manage the first meeting? Yep. I can do that. Um, I'll just need everybody's email. Maybe I, can get that. I can send it to you. Okay. Now, John, do you look at your email? What? Do you look I'm at your email? I'm looking at the phone. What? I'm pure illiterate. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hate this smartphone. I'm stupid. Well, you're not stupid. But, I know I'm stupid. Um, you did email. give us an email address, so that's the one that you I wanted used one, to I give you one. Yeah. I don't know if it works. So, I'm assuming we just call you when we need to there you go. schedule something. There you go. Okay, we can do that. But Jeremy, I will send you the other okay. contact Okay. Because I never got this. Okay. I'll show you my phone. It is somewhere. All right. There's a on the website now, there is a list of town roads. How, because I've been interested obviously for a long time of what the legal road are in the town of West Bath, which are both by ordinance and by actual way in one spot for 20 years, for this 20 years. How much of a, how much exists on, on that basis? I can answer that question because I looked it up. Because I had that question about the Hennessy Road, about the Austin Road. So I'm not where it's supposed to be. I don't care where it is. The road is there. And it's, it's yeah. part of the town road. But well, it's, it's both. But I've been there for 77 years and I don't know. Um, yeah. But we don't have any idea where it is. In, in I don't think they've ever been surveyed. What had happened was is that they, you know, they uh, it started out. It st let me finish. It started out like the Austin farm. These they had the old gentlemen used to have like farmers used to take care of their own roads. Mm -hmm. Then they would get assistance with the town to maintain that road because they worked on all the roads. Well, eventually. It came, became a town road. So what it was was a driveway yep. that went into your house or went down to the went into the Hennessy Road. That was established as of the road. Now I don't know if the, nothing was ever that I could find that it would say it was a two road road, one road road. The only road road I know of in the town of West Path that is documented and everything is the Bull Rock Road. 
That's a four-rod road. The only four-rod <coughs> road down, because it used to be a state main road. All the rest of them, and they just automatically got accepted by the town. There are a few, few that are recorded. Hennessy Road is the E.R. Brown Road. It is, well, yeah. it is a rod. It is meets and bounds. The road's not actually where it is. Well, we call it what it's called for, which is not surprising. But uh, there are a few that are documented. There's more in Georgetown. Yeah, that's about Georgetown. Well, Georgetown is so the ordinance, the legal basis for roads in West Bank. In many cases, my question was, and still is, how much of a database is there of that? I went through town. How many years did town report you got there? Town Hall. Yeah, I'd give them to you. Well, I'll talk about it. Well, you guys, I, I, I think we should move this discussion perhaps to your first meeting when you guys have a chance to talk about priorities. Um, if that works for you guys. Works fine. Very good, my answer. I move that we. So just to, to get this moving and hold everybody accountable. Do you know when Jeremy can give you the next in that meeting? Um, I think I need to send out a, an email to everybody and they can get back to you. Yeah. Okay. We, can, we can figure out a time once I get that. I'll send it out and then we can get that organized through our first meeting, figure out chair, vice chair, and responsibilities. Perfect. Um, I did notice here on this uh, West Bath Road Committee Charter, um, it has responsibility to the select board working uh, cooperatively with the road commissioner and recommended annual road maintenance and repair and budget. Is that part of the committee's responsibility or is that solely for the select board? We, the select board reviews this, the budget spends with the road committee, the road commissioner, but yeah. I'm, I'm certain that your input will help prioritize what you've seen out there. Okay. It's not necessarily um, something that's going to happen like next month as we begin this year's budget process. Right. So it seems like we're, as a board, as a committee, we're going to relay information to you and you guys will discuss directly with Steve. Because Steve is going to be attending the, the, the committee meetings. Not, not until you guys got something to get you on. I don't need to go sit down every week for you guys. But if you guys have something to come up and want to discuss, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and come on the meeting. Okay. And I'm not going to set myself every week. Sure. Well, this would be a conflict of interest, I think, I would say everyone in this. Is, is there something that we that you would be expecting from from us at this point, or is there something? Uh, basically, the town was lost in the road, you know, different parts of the road that you think that we should should get addressed. Okay. In certain ways, it wants to get addressed. Okay. You know, I don't want to be the only one calling the shots as an okay, this part of the road needs to be fixed, and you guys all say, we should have got this side. We can have a discussion over it, and that's probably what we fixed. There, we're all good. Sounds reasonable. Yes. Any other questions, thoughts? All right, let's move on to. And, oh, thank you guys for uh, helping us invent this. And I think it's going to be a very helpful um, addition to the way the town functions. I do have one other thing to bring up that this is, this is done, is that um, I'm not sure what's going on. We've had two or three storms so far this year, and we've bought 90 tons of salt. And I was just wondering who was given authority to be buying the salt, and why is it being used so rapidly? Well, in my experience, since I've been at the town office, Julie has always ordered salt. So when somebody goes to Julie and asks her for salt, she orders it. Um, Jamie felt the need to order salt because other towns were having trouble receiving salt. Mm -hmm. So he thought he would get ahead of the curve okay. and make sure that there was plenty of salt. Well, we agreed, That's what I was told. We agreed on giving him 30 to 60 tons a year 
for a bonus extra to help out. Not to supply a bond full of salt to be used on the roads for hot loads. I mean, I saw pure salt on our roads today, this morning. I just didn't know if you guys changed your mind on how the salt was going or no. what's going on. But it's, we are we paying him to do our roads with the sand that we supply to him, not the bare salt. That was the problem, the issue. If we're going to do that, then we should have, if we're going to supply sand and salt, we need to supply the sand mixed with salt, and then if these guys want to use salt, then they buy it, put it in their budget. On the further yeah, budget. we so talked we, about that when we were coming up with the contract. Right, because we, I mean, we can't monitor out. what's going on. I mean, right now, 90 ton of salt for a couple of these small storms, it's... You didn't use 90 tons, so you used one load, I think. I don't know. The town bought 90 tons this year. Have they paid for it? Yeah. Are we over a quarter? Well, normally we're supposed to just put up 60 tons. Yeah, and that's not something that has ever been discussed. Yeah. Well, I think that's We never talked about that. Well, I, I think the simplest solution is for, I'll just let Julie know that if any request for salt needs to come from you. And I think that will take care of the problem. Well, I just said that there's no way that I can monitor it the way it is right now. I mean, if you guys want to monitor this out or give an open checkup with it, whatever. But we've got to figure out a solution for it. So my concern is we keep saying go through the town administrator, go through the road commission, and go through this person. And somehow we're still getting around. Yep. Um, were we supposed to have the sand and salt mixed? We had some left over from last year, and was that supposed to be? Well, yes, it's being mixed. We put 500 yards mixed up in the building this year with salt that we had left over from last year. And now we ended up putting another 90 ton of salt in that building, and I don't know where it's been going. So, well, so how much is left out of two storms? I have no idea. You were to no. estimate it. I, I haven't gone up from all I just looked at to see how many loads that we've ordered and why we have 90 ton ordered this year so far when there's probably only been one snowstorm that we even needed salt out there. I believe we had a discussion probably two years ago and it was decided that the uh, any salt audit would go through the road commission, be okay by the road commission. Mm -hmm. That was a discussion the board had a couple of years ago. Yeah, we just need to reinforce that. Yeah. You can't borrow that if there's no going on, no one tells them. And while we're on the topic, are we going to open up like the first Saturday of the month that people can come get buckets? That didn't work last year. What do you think? I people are asking I for sand. Now. It was up there the other I say they got about 500 yards. If they want sand, they can pick away at that. Maybe just keep poking a hole open in it. I mean, there ain't no salt in it, but that's okay. For what they want. I mean, but no. It's for people who are going to do their sidewalks. You know, it's not, right. I, we, I think we, we've we historically given it to the community. Right. We just yeah. need to know what to tell people because people are calling. Well, then you've got to make arrangements with, I would say, I'd say probably Jamie and see if he can take a bucket and put one bucket out every weekend outside so people can go get from that and then after the weekend he can push it right back inside. If you guys want to open it for one day. The only trouble is with that I found out with giving town people whether they want I agree that they probably deserve it. But you get people in there that come in there with pickups. Mm -hmm. They stop going It's supposed to be two five gallon buckets. Well that don't you, that will work if you're standing there. Right. It was just it's on the news the other night, towns are all experienced. One or two people going in and taking it off. Yeah, and nobody should be at our sand shed anyway. But that's why you just opened it up for like, like three or four hours Saturday morning. You want your sand salt this when you go get it, and then it gets pushed inside. And that's what's left. But if you don't sit there and monitor it, they're going to take so it off. So why, why don't we coordinate that at the same time that West Bath has um, access to them? Yep, and that way it's, I'll say, visible by other townspeople. So that if you see pickup trucks piling it in there while you're over at... That's what I say, you're going to have to have it monitored. But if, we, but if we, uh, the, we can go on Saturdays to the transfer station from 8 to 10, we should do Saturdays from 8 to 10 at the salt shed, 
and then you're not, you at least have other people watching in proximity. Yeah, I, I think the liability of having somebody over to our salt ship and heavy equipment is like just a disaster. Not heavy equipment, no, just no, open no. it up. Just pull well, lines if it's stolen, people are, we're, we have, we have roads to maintain. I mean, that's just, I mean, you can't schedule that, unfortunately. So there, there should be a spot if the town wants to give the town's people sand. Well, I mean, we are subject to half tanks. It used to be at the town hall. Uh, yes, and I believe it should be at the town hall, and we've had this discussion as well. Our insurance company does not want people at our salt shed. They don't want people on that property. They shouldn't be. Or Jamie. So how do we move into the town hall? We don't have a shed there anymore. Well, we, we can get, get it in. in. It was never in the shed. We can get an open bin, we can get a lock bin, you can do we can put it before. in the back parking lot, we can put it in the front parking lot. There are options. You have so, road been. committee, what are your thoughts on that? Put it in the back parking lot. In what in type of device? Eight or ten yard canister that can be closed so it doesn't get watered out. My, the way it was. My opinion would be a conic box. Yeah. Put it in a conic box. Lock it up. And lock it up. Or town chooses to, they can, the road commissioner or a contractor can be paid to, to stock that for the town's people if they want to. I, mean, I, th I think we need to offer sand to the town. We've been doing that and I think it should You'd be. have to buy that conic box because yeah. that salt sand is going to ruin it. You can't run them anymore. No. But that is a good idea. I mean, it's got nice doors, you can shut it, you can put a tractor in there, put it in. And the biggest thing is, it's, it's got to be something you can lock up at night because people want to pull over the pickup truck. I mean, I, I watched people dig out when it was up to the town hall, go fill back of the pickup trucks. And that's how I looked down the road to Santa and the whole guy got away. So, do you know roughly, you, Jeremy, anybody, what that would cost? Yeah, five grand. Four to five grand. Yeah. Like so so you used one and if you use it, it's all Santa, it's probably going to last you about three years. No. Uh, you give five to ten years. I mean, just you know, you'd have to you'd have to spray it, main, maintain yes. it, you know, inside. I'd say it lasts for ten years. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, obviously, it being at the town hall, these things are not very appealing. No. Nope. Really. So you know, we want to probably either paint it green or black or or something, just so it looks halfway decent in our parking lot. You know, so it doesn't look ugly. Um, but that's the that to me, it's a huge expense to provide sand for. For the town's people, it, it really is. Me. I don't think this is something that can be decided tonight. Definitely something to be discussed. If we're talking about a five thousand dollar expense, then yeah, we can't. Yeah, then you got to, yeah, then, you got to then, 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 then Steve has to come over and, and take it from the salt shed and put it into the into right. the bin and, and buying it. it and mixing up the salt and all that. It's if you consider the amount that gets stolen. It probably is cheaper to buy five gallon buckets, fill them up yourself, and have people check them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is, is I, I went up there a couple Saturdays and opened up the shed and let people come there. Well, people are walking in there, all the people in their 70s, coming out Wait, with buckets. Excuse me? So I've been grabbing their buckets. <laughs> Going over there and filling them and putting them in the back, <laughs> so I didn't want to see them get out. The yeah, no. sheriff's department has a program for the elderly where they can call, and the sheriff's department will deliver it to the elderly. Ah, is that on our website? Yeah, really. It was at the beginning of the year. I can certainly repost it. <coughs> I think should stay up during the winter months. Like, yeah, we well, get a lot going on. Does the town own any other land besides? Town hall. Here. Here. School. And then you don't want to put that school. And put it right there. There's, there's not enough parking here at the hall. I mean, right. And I, I, I think putting down the town hall is just makes a wicked ice a lot. You got people coming in and out of there and they make a mess. I mean, we had one down there with a cover on it and you open it up and they threw the trash in it. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it would have to be down bottom and not up top like we've always had it. Right. And it's still going to be very appealing because I think going to start rushing, it's going to drip, it's going to run high now. Well, we need a, <laughs> if you've got something that should be made out of cement. So short term, because by the time we were to pull that together, the winter is going to be over. 
Um, short term, can we provide every other Saturday? At, I mean, at, how we've been Who's doing it. to be there? Who's but if they open it for two, if we do it from they Saturday move. from eight to ten, no, just open it. No one was there. He would, no, Steve would we open. can't leave people unsupervised at the salt shed. Right. Right. Our insurance company does not want that to happen. And I as town administrator risk, don't want that to happen. Risk management says no. And yeah, that's a huge liability. And Mike, Mike's observation about the, the number of thefts of sand over the years, whether it was at the salt shed more recently or at the town hall, as I recall, before it was moved to the salt shed, you, you'd had it filled and then it would be gone like overnight because it's, people would back right. up. Mm -hmm. People would back it up front. Mm -hmm. So we moved it to the salt shed hoping to avoid that and then run into a risk management issue. So maybe, maybe the outcome is that we are not looking at a thousand member community anymore. We're looking at 2,000 people and maybe we can't supply people with sand. Okay, well, there's another suggestion, and I'll, like I said, if you had a part-time employee, you could put him up there for an hour, and then you could be filling up five gallon pails and sending people on their way. I don't disagree, but this is not something that's going to happen. Well, I understand that too. I'm just putting so that on the table. So we need to decide example. whether we have a solution or if we're just going to say we don't have salt available. I would year. recommend uh, that we don't offer sand yeah. this year, and that we put. We put the word out and get the word out as well. We're we'll both through the ice. Another week or so, we're through the ice season. In the I, I would suggest to tell them it's not going to happen this year until we figure a long-term solution. We don't have right. help with COVID. Right. And, and because we can't afford to subsidize the businesses of people who are stealing our sand and salt. Well, you've got to have somebody check you. With, first of all, what town they're, what town they're from. Because they will come in from... Food better mm -hmm. if they know they got free sand. Mm -hmm. So let's not do anything. Do we want to make a motion? Do we want to make a motion? And I move that um, reluctantly we will not offer sand um, buckets to the public this year. I will second that, but we need to revisit this. Yes. For the following year, um, so if we can get that on somebody's radar, it needs to be visited in the next couple of months. Right. So, so budget comes, you right. can plan on buying a, a Cornet box or maybe a recycled, you know, it's spent it's box and put a little V roof on it. Or you something. Remember this you know? conversation in the next couple of months? Yeah, we we'll use the fire station. Made here for <laughs> <laughs> so you got to put a notice out online or something so people are aware. Yeah, yeah all, okay. all in favor of not offering sand to. All right, and we're going to really have to get you this. Did you vote that? Or I did not. Okay. okay. No, no. All opposed. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll have to really look at this as the upcoming budget when we're going to purchase. What did you call it? I'm sorry. Onyx. Onyx bone? Or other? Salt dispensary. Some type of container. Something. They probably have something on there. And I think, like, a, I enjoyed this discussion, and I think this is part, you know, even though you're the road committee, I think this is something that very much is part of figuring this all up. Okay. Seriously. We'll discuss it. Thank you so much for your time and dedication, truthfully. So we have, I have one other thing to bring up, you know. We go to these committees and we build a subdivision and, and we have to build these roads, the town specs and everything. So if the town ever took it over, you know, they'd be up the specs. So I've seen some of the roads the town's taken over through the town that were never brought up the specs and now we don't ever seem to have any discussion about taking over, offering the town to take over some of these subdivision roads that people Personally, I don't want did. to take over any of these projects. <laughs> Nobody does. But you, I mean, what do you offer these people that spent all this money to get the subdivision put in? 
But you got other rules. people paying taxes that, that are going to want the same thing. Right. So you can't you can't say, well, you can have your road plowed, but you got to plow your own. I think it's you get into a, a, a piece of where you start offering. Well, that take the, the whole town over. That's why they're so strict on the subdivision roads and stuff. So they built up the specs, so town can take them over. Well, we have our ordinances as well. Right. You know, our so ordinances ordinance. make sure that our our roads in the town are nice. We want and we want, want good things, not necessarily for the town to take them over, just so the community has. Yeah, it's a process and, and make it a standard. Is there also safety regulations? I mean, well, I'm just saying, truck we got better yeah. subdivision roads. We have town roads out there right now. Well, this town was really old. But I think, I think I'd be hard pressed to tell someone who lives on a dirt road that they can never become a town road, but some of these newer subdivisions can that have been there. And we'll task the road committee and the road commission with figuring out how we can get these roads up to higher standards than what we currently have. It doesn't make any sense to build roads uh, for new housing that are not up to modern standards, even though our old houses are on roads that were not built to any standard except what the horse could make it through. But just because somebody buys a house in a new sub subdivision, they know when they buy it that it's not a town road. So that's their choice, it seems to me. We don't need to take on other people's we don't need to take on any more roads. No, I understand that. That's not, that's not really my point. I mean, it's just that, you know, I know the standards for everything, but it always was presented to me, you know, okay, you build this up in case the town ever wants to take it over. So maybe, maybe we just ought to take that for our side of it. You build them up to the standards, period, and then not that the town ever take over. I've been told that many times for the last 50 years. So that we shouldn't be making false promises if at this point right. there's no will to take I don't think it's, it's not written in that, is it? Has this ever been in town? I, I, I've never seen it, but yeah. Yeah. are you just being no, told that the town will take it over? I don't know if that line would be exactly in that maybe. No, it's not exactly it's yeah. set like that, but it's it, well, part of the reason to build the road up too is that you've got to get an ambulance there or a fire truck in the spring when the roads are all nuts. You get a you get a piece of road if you want this. Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars road. Yeah, and and I think that originated from state law, not town law. That was not town dictated. That state because yeah, of the state safety rules, state and fires. Yeah. It's not I like just, someone in town decided to impose that. Um, well, I guess I guess the bottom line is my question is how did we end up with all these shit roads? <coughs> all these what? <laughs> I didn't hear what he said. All these junk roads. All he said all these shit roads. That's what he said. <laughs> Well, I mean, they were. Built, I, I didn't hear. What they were built 100 years ago with with different spec material than we use today. So, I mean, obviously, as things progress, you know, we get smarter and things change and evolve. And now, now it's our job to repair and break up the standard. Right. There you go again. We have trouble not to afford to afford the roads we have now. I won't take new ones. Oh, I know that's the problem. We'll let the roads start up again. By the time we get done fixing all the roads, we'll be starting all over again. Exactly. Exactly. But that's the purpose of this. That's, that's the way it goes. To schedule it, as a, you want it as a cycle. Yeah. yeah. And truthfully, the purpose behind some of this is to set a schedule we can then budget for that. Right. And I think that would be collectively a, a good job as the committee to put a 5, 10, 15, maybe even a 20 year plan together for capital improvements so Steve can make you know, better, better decisions as, as he moves forward. It helps as we spend the money. Thank you. Thank you. We need to, to move on. Um, thank you for your time and your effort. We really appreciate it. And we'll this committee, um, anybody who serves on the committee has much value to appreciate. So we're going to say thank you because we know that in some ways you've just undertaken a thankless job <laughs> because the roads are always going to be something that somebody complains about. But you There's only three things this town spent money on. Fire department, roads, and school. Think about it. Those are the most important right. things. Okay, uh, business item right. number Thank two. You. two. We need to, to move along here. Yes, we do. Um, land use ordinance amendments. Um, 
Darlene will attend the meeting to discuss pending amendments to the land use yeah. ordinance. This includes a request for a special town meeting to amend the table yeah. of regulations, which defines principal uses in the urban development park. Um, I opened this up and when I got my packet and I was dismayed that there was no further information available to me when I was trying to figure out what was being asked for. A special town meeting to amend the entire table? Well, so what happened? was um, Derek Dudzik, who owns the Wing Farm, who's purchased Wing Farm and is developing lots up there, had come to the uh, planning board looking to do some things that just didn't quite follow the land use language that was inside the ordinance. Um, so what we've done is looked at some of the things. Uh, he's made a list for us for some of the things that he wants to do there in Wayne Farm moving forward. And he's requesting that we have a special town meeting to make some of these adjustments so he, he can move forward with the development of his property. And we discussed it with the Sweatman. You guys thought that was a good idea. He came in, he spoke to you, he um, was in a couple of times. He and his uh, partner, David Cartier, came in and gave a list to the uh, planning board last month of the uses that they were exactly wanting to do moving forward. We said, you know, um, well, right now he really wants to do like a, a brew pub with a restaurant type of thing, uh, similar to like bath brewing downtown, I think. So we said, well, you've got nine lots in there go think about exactly all the different types of things you want to do and then we'll compare it to the ordinance to make sure that those land uses are allowed inside the urban development park and if they're not how we can adjust them and do some modifications so we can do this all in one one felt swoop. Um, so I have a list here of what he brought for us. I'm sorry I don't have it for you. I kind of marked mine up. Why, Sorry, why, don't we, copies? why don't we have that? Why was that not presented to us as part of the packet that we got? Well, because I did it last night. I can share it with you now if you like. I, I, have, I have expressed my dismay any number of times in the last year about getting information at the last minute that starts that requires a good deal of discussion. And again, getting the marked up piece as we sit down to meet just frustrates the, the jeepers out of it. Well, I, we were trying to do it expeditiously because Derek is looking at a timeline with um, a developer wanting to move forward with this. So it was just discussed at our last meeting and then we had the holidays, and so I just got this completed. Madeline, um, you do understand she did this last night on her time, right? At like 9 o'clock. And I did this on my time, too. So... Right, but you, you just expressed your concerns about, about timely information, and she just did this last night. And when we were here before the selectmen, you all were very... Um, desired that we got this going and rolling quickly. We so, talked about one particular item having to do with the group pub, not a wholesale discussion of, about other things. Uh, well, we talked, we actually did talk about having him come through with a collective approach so that it, his total, all of his visual requests on how he'd like to bring the land forward was presented in one town meeting versus having him do one and one and one. It made sense to bring it all forward at one time. We did talk about that. And so that's what we're doing. So why a special? Why can't he do what everybody else does? Which was a town meeting. Well, a why a special meeting? He has some time constraints with um, developers that are looking at 
property down. With construction, there's all these lead times. It takes a long time even to get a building ordered. Then you've got to wait 10 months for it to show up, that sort of thing. So you're just trying to roll it in faster than waiting until June to have this change. June or July, whenever the meeting is. And the Slutman were on board with having a special town meeting and, and moving it forward early to try to help out a business in town and develop our commercial base. Are, are there things in there that our current owners wouldn't cover? Yeah, I mean, I can get to that. So some of it wasn't in here and some of it was in there. So there were five, four different things that he was requesting. Is it the stand the red dome? Yeah, so based on what I gave you was the entire land use listing. Mm -hmm. So you have the whole thing in context. If you go to page seven, so I think we changed like four, maybe five of them, and I can go over why. So page seven, it's fairly obvious why, it's because those are the things that that need to be changed to make the to make the uh, land formerly known as the wing farm useful for more. Well, it, it, it well, provided the wing farm actually provided some elements. Yeah, to certain, so it provided the opportunity for a hotel and eating, right? Which, which should, in theory, carry over to a restaurant and brew pub, but but it because doesn't. it doesn't, there's there's this kind of fluctuating engagement, right? And we're trying to make it because there's pieces here that do accommodate it in one way, but not in another way. I am not objecting to the change in the uses. I'm objecting to having the changes presented to me before the meeting starts. Minutes. Well, I suppose you could vote to wait another month, but I'm not so sure that that would be fair to Mr. Dudson. I'm okay with the timeline. I think we should at least hear what you'd like to say. Keep going? Yep. Okay. So, um, on his list, he had um, breweries and distilleries with tasting rooms and restaurants, including bars, pubs, food trucks, and food service stand-alone restaurants. Um, so this is actually covered really well. Um, page seven, number eight. It used to be indoor places for eating and drinking, no dancing alive, entertainment permitted. So it's, it's the problem with this one as it was read, or as it's written, is that that's not allowed in the UDP zone. If you look over to the right under UDP, there's no P, which means it's not permitted mm -hmm. in the UDP zone. And so the wind farm is only a part of the UDP zone. There is other lots besides the wind farm in there. So when I'm talking UDP, it's wind farm and some other, some other lots up there. So that was the problem with this one. Um, and it also says no dancing or live entertainment permitted. And he did want entertainment, you know, have a three-piece band or something in the brew pub for Friday night or whatever. Um, so what we actually decided to do, the board, we all talked it over. Um, we added a 12, you see down below. So it's exactly like number eight. Well, first we added outdoor to number eight because with COVID, people have been eating inside and outside. And with it just saying indoor, it kind of excluded and made some of the places and how they've had to adjust how they work kind of non-conforming now. So we actually added and outdoor and we took solely because solely seems strange. So we changed eight. We added 12, which is exactly eight, except for it does allow dancing and live entertainment. The thought was that um, allowing that in the urban development park and not in the business commercial made sense because they're over there, they're not right up against homes, residences where music would be allowed. Uh, it's not his intention to have like a, like a huge venue or an outdoor, somebody said Woodstock or something, I think it was one of the comments, yeah. but that was not his intent. It's just, you know, you go down to Sebasco and they've got three or four people playing on the outside deck, you know, on a Friday night, something like that. So that was our um, fix for that one. And so number 12 is only allowed in the UDP. Can you tell me why just revising eight isn't sufficient? 
because it says no dancing or live entertainment. You should take that out. And he wants dancing and live entertainment. But that would impact the commercial. Because so. this then, is only, they only added it for UDP. The P, if you go down to the red, it's only in the UDP, which is not abutting residential. Right. We have a lot of residents in our business and commercial zone, so having live music only in P, no, like only it would in be UDP. intrusive in the business and commercial if there was a resident right next door. Okay. I think that makes sense. So that one takes care of that one. Um, the second one was indoor and outdoor sports, playground, batting cages, mini golf, driving range, skating, soccer, bocce ball, yoga spin classes, cornhole, and similar activities. So that one is actually taken care of by, if you go to page eight, um, there is an indoor and outdoor sports facilities conducted for profit. Can I just ask you to say those, I'm sorry, say those things again? Yeah. Slowly, bad yeah, 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 because yeah. it's kind of interesting what he wants to talk about. So it's um, indoor and outdoor sports, playground, batting cages, mini golf, driving range, skating, I think ice skating, soccer, bocce ball, yoga spin classes, or yoga and then spin classes, cornhole, and similar activities. So just outdoor sport, recreation, whatever. So the um, number seven on page eight is outdoor sports facilities conducted for profit. So we added the indoor, because it might be indoor and outdoor. It just seemed weird to be only outdoor and exclude indoor. So that was one that was already there. And that is in the UDP, so it didn't have to be added. Um, he had another one, farmer and flea markets. We kind of debated on farmer and flea markets, and they're kind of the same thing. Um, and then there is one in here for agricultural, um, it was agricultural market, I think, which covers a farmer's market. But anyway, so we took care of that one with, um, let's see, number eight. We added number eight, indoor and outdoor flea markets, and we put that just in the UDP. I mean, we can add these late. We can take and add them to the business commercial later, that sort of thing, but we, not having an incredibly amount, incredible amount of time to really delve into it and maybe add some stipulations inside of the ordinance to cover certain things. We wanted to just really keep it simple and non-intrusive to the community. So we added number eight to cover that. Um, under G number three, there was bottling of beverages. Now, in our attempt to try to figure out how a brewery fit into these land use ordinances. We came across bottling of beverages. There was some debate amongst the board on that doesn't include manufacturing them, it just means you bottle them. It's like you drive them in a truck, you drive the Coke in on a truck and you put it in bottles and you send it out. So we decided to add bottling, uh, manufacturing and to the bottle Makes of sense. beverages to try to clear that one up. And I think that is it. And I don't think there are questions. David? I would just like to note that the wing file, the purpose of the wing file years ago was to have a commercial industrial park away from the rest of the Route 1 area. And this does seem to fit that quite nicely. And that's what the town wanted a, a wing file development commercial properties. Well, and he's doing that. thing I hear in here. Um, seems to be the latest things that are happening across the state. I don't know how many youth are involved in ice hockey and ice skating. I feel like everybody and their family are going out of state to make that happen. I would like to see people stay in the state of Maine and the town of West Bath to do those activities. Absolutely. Um, every Saturday, <laughs> I take my dad to all the flea markets and indoor and outdoor flea markets we can find in the state of Maine going all the way to the Canadian border. It would be nice to have something like that. Absolutely. In this town, I think we, for the first time, have the opportunity to have a community. Um, I would like to see that happen. I agree. I think these are great additions. I, mean, I think some of this is actually in here it already. Is. I think it's, you know, when we look at having certain elements included, like a hotel, and eating, 
I, it, to me, it's not a far stretch to add in these elements um, as an interpretation of what's already there, but more clarification. So I, I, I'm very much in favor of expanding the utilization of Wayne Farm. Charlie, how much, how much lead time do we need to call a special town meeting? Um, off the top of my head, I should know that. Uh, I believe it's about 14 days for an open town meeting. If you were having it by secret ballot, as our referendums have, um, that's a little bit longer. That's a two-month process. So, so this would be open vote is for today. Day. Right. Anything is permitted still. Yeah. Yeah. COVID. yeah. yeah. You, you have that the just option to the of board. an open town meeting or a secret ballot town meeting. But does the Question secret ballot have, have to do two months? We yeah. have secret ballot. Oh, yeah. There's a statutory timeline. So it's really the timeline that I think right. Right. we're looking an at. An open town meeting is fairly straightforward and easy to put together. The question would really be the venue for that. Right. If we think there's going to be a larger turnout, you want to make sure you have the room so that people feel comfortable. You don't want people to, in my opinion, you don't want people to be uncomfortable oh. coming to a town meeting because there might be 50 people right. in the fire department. Right. And that's really going to be hard to find because the schools aren't going to let you in. Well, we can pull all the trucks out. Yeah. And just do it in the, in you the days. Yeah. Which how Pittsburgh many, and other towns do do that. How yeah. many do you think we could fit in there with social distancing here? Like the six feet? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's only three now. Is it bigger than How much larger feet? is it? Yeah, it's only three feet, feet isn't yeah, it? It's, it's much bigger. Oh, yeah, probably yeah, three of these anyway. We can okay. make it work. I wouldn't concern okay. yourself too much with the venue. Teacher. We'll figure that out. I, I think I, I think we should expedite this as quick as possible so that they can move forward with what they're trying to achieve in a timeline that they're okay. trying to achieve it. I move that we set a special town meeting uh, at the nearest appropriate time in the nearest appropriate place um, to see if what the town desires to do about these changes in the uh, land use ordinances. Yeah, and that, that, be yep. a, that be an open town meeting in order to expedite the process for the um, changes. We just need a second for we a second. Okay. I second it. Okay. Yep. it the okay. board was also curious if we could push forward some of the ordinances that did not go through last year that were ready to go that had been vetted by Sally. I think totally. we need to take these one at a time. I do too. Absolutely. Yes, so just if you can finish this okay. motion. This. Uh, okay. That's all My right. only okay. question about this motion is, is have you, are you going to talk with Sally about it first, Darlene? Yeah, I was waiting to get the okay from you guys before I was going to okay. send these off to Sally to look at. Um, and we were hoping that each of these changes would be like a separate vote. So there's someone like two of them, but not the other two. They could say no to two and yes to two kind of thing. That makes sense, too. We're going to separate them out. Okay. okay. So as soon as we get a response from Sally, we can set a date. Okay. So do we want to vote on that now? I think we all did except for Madeline, but I think she made the motion, so. <laughs> okay. So yes, yeah, once vote. those are reviewed, then we can compile a warrant for the select board to sign. Right. And if that's ahead of... The next Selectman's meeting, we could always hold a special yeah. Selectman's meeting to get it going. Yeah. Now, now can we add in her comment to this? Oh, that's a separate issue. So yeah, go ahead. With now, that. go ahead and talk about. So we had to finish this one. The, now we yeah. Talk about. So the um, the board was hoping that we could also at that special town meeting push forward the ordinance changes that did not go to the meeting last year. There were a couple got flipped three of them. And, mm -hmm. and how does that fit with the with the goal for the comprehensive plan? Some of them were we were they, actually voted on and they were flip flopped in the warrants so and we had to pull yeah. up. So Not, none of them are um, conflicting with the comprehensive plan. Some of them were the um, making consistencies within the book, which is totally in line with the comprehensive plan, and making it clearer to read and understand. So okay. I don't think it does. Okay. I actually think it explained the, in the timeline. I thought that we meetings. wanted to do this all as one. I did too. Well, these are ones that were supposed to have been done. I know, that but fell off. I understand that, but 
I'm, I'm just not comfortable with it. I, I wanted to, to do it all at once and be done with it. Not done with it. I was going to say, it's all the change is going to be done with it. So I just think, again, we're trying to piggyback and get. Well, when was the date to help yeah, timing of the newspaper? 15 which days is really 15 12. versus 12. The, uh, these are, and when were alteration typos essentially corrected? So they're, they're not. I can we can revisit them if you want. I can bring them to the next meeting. I, I would me. I would prefer to have them before the meeting, so that I can read them and understand what they're like. I still would like to have them before the meeting. It's much more. That's you very want, clear. You want your things 14 days in advance. I don't think it's too much to ask us to have a two days to prepare. So I will say, if you review them at the next meeting then push they, that won't be on, we can't produce a warrant that night based on every the scenario. Time, yeah, the timeline. Well, so I'm just concerned about so, the So I guess, let me, let me pose a question. Are we trying to do it as fast as possible, or are we okay reviewing those at the next selectmen's meeting, and then what, setting the warrant after that? But we're not, it won't be voted on. How does it have to be voted on? So if we have a special town meeting, we're trying to put them all into the town meeting. Well, I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a selectmen's meeting to approve a warrant for a town meeting. But I suppose if we review them at the next town meet, next selectmen's meeting, then we can hold a special selectmen's meeting after that just for the warrant. Sorry, I talked myself off. <laughs> Did I get yourself back off the cliff? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Originally, we were talking about around. having a right. warrant for a special town meeting at the next selectmen's meeting. Right. We'll do right. that at a later meeting. Immediately following the meeting on the 20th. It works. Right. Okay. Got but we'll, do we need a motion to go forward with that or no? No, because it's going to be voted on at the next meeting. Okay. I think, I we're, I think we're at where we are. I can provide those to Christine by Monday morning. Perfect. That would be very helpful. Okay. We set with business item two. We are. I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. So you have some really cool plans. Just to clarify this, the boys that look at the wind farm proposal at the twentieth. Yes. And the voters will be taking them on a special town meeting for those. Change, no, I well, think we no. approved them. We're I, waiting for Sally to approve them. What what they're going to review at the next meeting are the ordinance changes that got mixed up on last year's town meeting warrant. So we're not going to set a date for a special town meeting until the board has had opportunity to review those changes again. Because we have to hear back. We have to hear back from Sally. I we, realize that. That's please. the point. You may not make. How busy is Sally right now? Right. I would, pref I, I would prefer that we take care of uh, these particular changes in order to uh, allow the plans to go forward for the wing farm, and that should be priority. Sally's already approved the ordinance changes. The it was, it was our, it was our mix-up, not Sally's mix-up. No, it's time for you to review. But but it's but I, it's we're not this the, the ordinance changes aren't going to be at Sally's. I should say the wing farm are the only ordinance changes that will be at Sally's. Let me reword that. Right. All the other ordinance changes that we are considering have already been reviewed by Sally. So the, my point is that if there is a need for lag time, we take care of the and there's a problem with including the second set at the special town meeting, but the special town meeting for that is urgent. So if we can get those done together, good. But let's take care of the wind farm issue. Absolutely, I agree that's a priority, but I think we can get both done. So I just want to make sure that we don't delay the wind farm for any reason whatsoever. So if we can't get them done, that we just remember what our priorities are. And those other 
those other things can be taken care of at the regular town meeting. Did you say the next slide meeting was the 20th? 20th. I just have one question. So you go through your approval and you say yes, we go. When is the actual town meeting? When's the first available time that that could be? We have to wait to hear back from Sally. So that, you're that, really talking end of February? It depends. We don't, we don't know. She, she now has to approve the language that we put forth and that will then, <coughs> so from that point forward, it's two weeks. At what point? Do we not have a special town meeting to bear the cost if we're only saving 60 days? I don't think, I mean. It's, it's, it's minimal cost. The cost okay. isn't a factor. Okay. And I don't think the town meeting is not very the cost. Six, and it's I'm not sure 60 days. Kathleen and Derek would be fine to stand them. Yep. And he's already said the market. So. Yep. It's just with construction, there's such lead times on anything. Even ordering right. anything. Ordering, ordering material. Anything. It's all, it's everything's so. just not. Try to buy material. I know. And I think it's a great addition to West Bath. I really do. Anything commercial. Something else to Anything consider. Commercial. We will need a moderator for no the town no. meeting. So yeah, everyone can kind of think about who would be good to uh, stand up in front of the crowd and moderate this vote. Because the clerk cannot do it. Happily take on that task. <laughs> um, so think about that because we will need a moderator. Okay. Everyone think about that. I nominate David, but we'll talk yeah. about it. <coughs> I think we should move on to item three. There's a quiet crowd, I'd be like. Okay, town and here's the greatest report. Fire park was lovely this time. I don't have anything to report on. Coming off of the holidays. I'll we'll have more for you next time. Okay, future agenda items. Anything that we need to put on for the next meeting? I'd like to see any item of value. Put forth. So this has been transferring a piece of land in my mind. Okay. I think we have a warrant article for that. I'll look it up see what it says. I'd like to just anything that, that we offer to be offered in the town. Anything else from the peanut gallery? Public comment? Anything?